Welcome back. We are continuing the debug of this HP switching power supply, which is turning to be quite an adventure. It had a nasty habit of blowing its fuses and MOSFETs. In the previous episodes, we managed to tame the power section, and to our great relief, it does not blow MOSFETs anymore. But it's still not regulating properly, my 5 volts looking more like 10, even under load. And while we were debugging the feedback circuitry, we had an unscheduled electro-boom moment caused by a probe that got too close to the high voltage section. Fortunately, I think it only blew a garden variety op amp and maybe a comparator the probe was attached to. I suspected the op amp was already halved it anyhow, but by now it is very, very dead. So I replaced the two chips and we are ready to solder on. Okay, so we are going to try the, the board with its uh, new op amps and its new comparator. I was trying to figure out if we could power it up or check it without uh, having to power the, the high voltage section. And it's actually difficult but possible. I have to give it a lot of stuff. I have to give it plus and minus 15 volts to um, power the op amps, this whole section. I have to give it uh, 5 volt for the sense and I have also to give it a square wave for the PWDM generator 36 volt AC uh, so but I can do all of that I have this triple power supply so it's plus minus 15 and 5 volts actually I've put it at 5.19 it's supposed to regulate at 5.20. I have to give it 40 kHz 36 volt square wave and I do that do it with this instrument. I cannot quite do 36 volts but I change I, I connected myself here and I put a lower value resistor so it should give the same voltage over here. So with all that HP equipment I should be able to power the thing safely without the high voltage se section and see if the chain works. Uh, so I, I checked with the voltmeter already. Uh, here it used to be wonky, now it's at zero, so I think the op amp's working better. And uh, I am checking right here, should be the air voltage, and we should see a switch at 5.20 volts. So let's try that. Right now I am at. 5.19 and it's at about plus 12 volts so it's all the way up to the rail and now I go to 5.20 and it went all the way down so it's switching just where it should at 5.20 5 volts and it's very very precise here so that's some good news you can see the time constant also so it's doing what it should. Um, so, no, of course, in DC it has a you know, very high open gain loop. And now I can try to test this part if the comparator works. Uh, I just need to give it the 40 kilohertz. So let me switch to the blue trace. And let's switch it from point 0.19 to 0.20. And you can you can see it happening. It's pretty short. You can see how it during the, the transition it makes its PWDM which starts large and goes small. So that's honky dory. That's working plenty fine. So looks like our our feedback loop is repaired at least up to the opto isolator. So it's repaired up to here it works. And I cannot test that part without powering the uh, full power supply. Okay, so um, we configure myself for a full up test here. The voltage here is what we're going to look at, if it's still unregulated or not. Hopefully this time it will be 5.20. But knowing this power supply, <laughs> we should not make any assumptions. Let me put you off to the side. A bit more. Yeah, it turned on, but it's not regulated. You can tell it's 
Dang. Something's still wrong with it. So it's not perfect, but if you notice, it's a lot better. It's not 10 volts anymore, it's 5.9. And I was hardly drawing any current. I was at uh, half in amp, which is very low for the spark supply. So I think we've made progress. There is one more component in the chain that we did not test, the opto isolator. I tried to measure it in circuit, but that proved very difficult. So I decided just to take it out for a simple bench test. Just to make sure I wired it up quickly on my little convenient war tester here and on the one hertz clock. And sure enough it works. So I have one hertz coming at the, uh, on the LED side and it's coming out on the output side. And it works at least at low frequency. So wouldn't you know it? I resoldered the isolator in place and now I see it doing its job, kind of. So this is 300 milliamp, it's still high, 5.6, but it's not 9 volts anymore or 7 volts anymore as I used to have. And then I'll bring the current up and now we have gotten below 5.2 and you see it's starting to get pulses. I can see the, the pulse lengthening. And now I am moving the current 1.3 and it's regulated. Okay, and that seems to have done it. Just resoldering, desoldering, and resoldering an opto isolator. Weird. It's the probing. I took all the probes out and it started to misbehave again. So it has something to do with the loading I put with the probes, which shouldn't be very much. So now it's fully loaded, it's at about an amp, 750 milliamps, and it's okay. And if I just take this off, it jumps to 5.78. And if I take this one off, it, <laughs> it stopped, and now it's at 5.9. This is silly. It's it's a uh, it's a quantum physics experiment. When when you when you probe it, you change the experiment. So that's going to make our life really difficult. Uh, first of all, the feedback loop is very sensitive, and then what has happened is something has changed slightly in the, in, in the loop, and we don't know exactly what it is. It could be uh, the MOSFETs are not original, definitely. It could be something as simple as a resistor or a capacitor slightly changing. So in any case, what we have, to, um, I know what we have to do. We have to try to retune the feedback loop uh, for this, the configuration this is presently in. I finally tamed the beast. It's gone into regulation at 5.17 volts and you can see some pulses going and I had to make some modifications to the feedback loop but before I can tell you what I did I have to uh, explain with a sheet of paper. So my first impulse was to make the feedback a little stronger uh, and here I tried to uh, make that signal a little higher so I pulled it up with a resistor to plus 5 volts and that gained me a little bit it might go you no know, it went into regulation maybe at you no know, 1.5 or 1.2 amps instead of you no know, far away in, in the 2 amps uh, land uh, but that was not enough so then I went to try to tame the bulk converter my thought was that it's too efficient goes to too high voltage and there I tried to slow the MOSFET down uh, putting a gap across this gate. Uh, it's actually the MOSFET is significantly faster than the, the original one. Uh, and that also gained me a little bit, but not enough. And at one point, the power supply would just not start. So then I remembered that this is more complicated than I drew here. There is actually, and I found that late yesterday, an other feedback pass over here. So it took me a long while to figure out because it's hidden in this mess of wire and it's pretty unusual. 
and I was following you know, the 5 volts and path back. But eventually, when I was tracing this, there's a wire I couldn't figure out where it went, and I found it. It comes straight for, from the 110 volt, that's the orange line here, and it goes to this resistor here, to this resistor there, and then the output gets mixed in the same resistor ladder than the 5 volt uh, feedback comes to. And that's when I discovered basically that there were actually two loops uh, imbricating in each, imbricated in each other and actually they, they allude to that in the uh, short description. There is actually an other feedback path over here for the 100 volt and it gets added in one of those mysterious transistor ladders and what I thought, well, if I make this one stronger and bring down that voltage, then maybe that will work. And actually, it did. So what I just did is I put a resistor in parallel with this resistor. This is 21K, something like that, 21.5K. 20, and I put a, a 50K resistor above it, and that was enough to bring the voltage down so that now the uh, other regulator would kick in. Demonstration. I have taken the, re the resistor out and this is the power supply as it was at 1 amp. There you go, it came in and you can tell it's not regulated, it's at 5.7 and uh, there is no pulses coming out of the optocoupler. If I get it far enough 1.8 amps. Now the regulation is starting to kick in and it's regulated. Let's try the same thing with the resistor in. So now I am going to put my magic resistor in parallel with the feedback from the 100 volts and try not to get another electro boom moment. Actually, I might. Uh, it should work. All right, so now I have a little stronger inner loop feedback, and we'll put it back on one amp and turn it on. And right away we're at one amp, and we are already in regulation at uh, uh, 5.15, so I can go to two amps. And you see the pulses in regulation have gotten bigger and it's following and it's nice and regulated. And I can go down to 0.5 amps and it's still there. So it starts nice, that's the very minimum of a correction. I'm not sure what exactly caused the whole thing to get out of whack, uh, but it might be simple, simply that our transistors are more efficient and that it needed a little bit more help for the regulation to knock down the buck converter. At least we've learned something. <laughs> we've probably visited every little corner of a switch power supply. Okay, it's back in the instrument. See if we can give it a try. One, two, three, nothing goes. Fan spins. Uh, not everything came up. Uh -huh. Okay, still not out of the wood yet. So when I test it in the machine, it's only 4.7 volts. And the power good signal doesn't come out, as it should not. So maybe this machine is made for... It. This power supply doesn't only works when it draws a lot of current. And I have to remove my little modifications. And I would explain it. It just works under heavy load only. It's made for heavy load only. Oh no, we managed to over reverse engineer it which you could feel coming while watching the video. 
So in our zealous attempt to make it switch on cleanly at only one amp, we knocked it down too far. In retrospect, one amp is very little for this power supply, which looks strong enough for a few hundred watts, so maybe it runs at 10 or 20 amps in normal usage. Since it was to be always connected to a known instrument, the engineers did not bother to make the regulating loop cover the low end of the power envelope. So actually we repaired it way back then in the middle of the video as soon as we switched the op amp uh, that was the the original problem and it was already working but we we didn't know any better okay try number two there we go fantastic okay so it was a supply that was optimized for really heavy draws Man, what a job! <laughs> this is, I have never had so much difficulty with the supply, and that's uh, not saying much because I had the Alto before, but wow, I probably threw everything I had at it <laughs> to get to this point. Okay, good, it works. So finally, we are back with the regular programming and with what we wanted to do in the first place. Is this a good quartz or is it a bad quartz? Are you a good crystal or a bad crystal? Who? Me? I'm not a crystal at all. It says one megahertz on it. And we should know in a second. So a signal goes from the tracker to the RF analyzer and they are both synchronized. From uh, almost uh, nothing to 26 gig. We don't need that much, of course. And... And this tells me this is a good quartz. This snows straight smack in the middle at uh, 1 megahertz, center 1 megahertz, and has a nice, beautiful resonance. Right. All, all this effort for a simple result. So, in the end, what was the original failure in this power supply? With so many components failing, some from an, our own darn fault, it's hard to tell. I put my money on the JFET op amp as it was clearly not regulating at all before we changed it and I think the power supply was fully repaired as soon as we did. Did the unregulated supply then trigger the death of the MOSFET driver chip and then snowballed into MOSFET mayhem? Or the other way around? We will never know for sure. In any case, our precious instrument is repaired and we sure had a jolly good time during quarantine chasing elusive faults in the switching power supply. Hope you guys are all safe and healthy and see you in the next episode.